Hi everyone, welcome to the 4x4 Fab Shop. And today I'm going to show you how to build a set of standards for your tube bender. They'll tell you how much material you need to make a 90 of 45 and in 10 degree increments. So that you know if you're wanting to build a job or bid a job, you know how much material you need. And then at the end, I'll show you a cool way to measure your tubes inside your vehicle if you're wanting to make a roll cage or something. So let's dig in. All right, so we've cleaned a couple of, uh, this is 85,000 inch and a half diameter. This is ERW tubing. We're not experimenting with uh, DOM, right? So this ERW tubing is a good way to build, do some of your, I'll say lighter bin work. Good thing to experiment on. If you learn how to use your bender, that ERW tubing is going to be immensely cheaper. So I would highly suggest you use that, especially when you first get it and you're doing some of your setup stuff. You know, DOM is going to be very expensive. You don't need molly for this kind of thing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come in here. And we're going to we're just going to start six inches in, and then we're going to lay out every inch, and we're going to do the layout on the seam. And we're going to lay out for about 24 inches. And this allows us to see how much material we use on the bends. Now the bender we're using is a Woodward Fab Bender. It's got an inch and a half die in it. And we've got this swag conversion kit that we have a uh, Harbor Freight cylinder on. And if you're interested in any of this, you know, we have these videos on our channel as well. So take a look at the build for the swag mount and some tips and tricks when you actually mount your hydraulic cylinder. All right, so we're gonna load up our first piece of tubing. And we're gonna line up the very first mark with the edge of the die. We'll snug up our tube. Now what we're going to do is, we've marked the tube in inches across the seam, and then every 10 degrees, we're going to mark the tube, and that way we'll be able to see, that way we will be able to see every 10 degrees how much material we're using. Alright, so let's take the slack out, so we'll just... Alright, so there's all the slack out, so now let's bend to our first 10 degrees. Now I'm going to put a mark right here at the end of the die, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. So let's take this piece out. Let's see how we are on our 90. All right, so we just got this protractor, also from Harbor Freight. Now Swag makes a kit that you actually had alter one of these, and it becomes a digital gauge for your uh, bender. So you just so on here. So according to this, we're actually three degrees past ninety. I'm actually over bent by three degrees. So in future, I'll have to do another one of these that's not quite ninety. Okay. But overall, I think it's a pretty good bend, and you can see here that. For a 90, we used one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and a half inches of material just to form that 90. And it works out almost to an inch for every 10 degrees. It's pretty close. All right, so let's bend to 45 also. Bent a new piece. We overbent this side, and we're within a degree, so we're going to call that good. So you're going to have to go through your bend allowances. If you change wall section, 
you won't have to change your angle measurements but your spring back is going to change with every diameter and every wall section so you're going to change that little bit okay so on a 45 so it looks like we use one two three four inches of material and once again it almost works out to a degree per inch and you can see here where your bends start so let me show you an easy way to measure while you're in there trying to bend something up so what we do is we're going to mark here on the leading edge of the 45 and you can see right where it starts it's also right where your first mark is all right so you want to cut a small slot here at the end and there's two ways you can do that if you have a cutoff saw whether it be a cold saw like this one or an abrasive saw you can just go in here you want the cut right here on this edge so you don't want to start here and go this way you want to start and go in and I'll show you why here in a second so way number one And that's just at the, at the termination point of the bend. So that's one way you can do it. Now the other way is you can just take your cutoff wheel and put a small cut in here. Now I personally prefer the saw for obvious reasons. Right? I think it makes a better cut and it's by far easier to use. Just don't cut all the way through. All right, so here's what that slot's used for. Let's say I'm trying to figure out how long of a piece I need in here. I can hold one of my standards in here, hook my tape measure up to it, and go over to the next spot. All right? Or I can tie this one in here and go over to the side once again hook the tape in and then go to the next location all right so that was building a set of standards we built one for a 90 and one at a 45 and a nice thing about it is it tells you how much material you need for the bend and you use that to tell yourself how much material you need if you want to build a hoop you need to know how much you get up over and down but you need you got all that material that's going to be in the bins as well right so we marked it two ways one we marked it by the inch and we marked it every 10 degrees so you can if you need to go like 90 plus 10 or minus 10 or 80 or something right it'll tell you how much material you need and we showed you a cool way how to measure these inside the vehicle how you can put the tube in your vehicle use that little slot we cut and then measure over to the next thing okay so very useful tool and we also showed you how to use the protractor that we picked up from harbor freight as well All right so you can go in here and measure your angles but the thing we didn't show you is you can also use it in your vehicles you can put this in the vehicle to tell you what angle do I need All right so you just Put it, fit it up in there, come in here and look at the angle, that way you can find out what you need. So this tells you what angle you need, the tube will tell you how much material you need, and then you can measure from bend to bend. So if you need some more information on your tube bender, I'll see you in this video here that shows you how to put the hydraulic cylinder on it, and then if you need some help on the actual welding I'll see in the other video on welding until then this is the 4x4 fab shop please remember to like subscribe and share and I'll see you on one of these other videos